Okay, so I've got lots and lots of different paths here. And now I need to start cleaning up the last corners. I'm going to turn off the sketch. And just to make sure I don't have any white anywhere, I'm going to select it all and move it off of the artboard onto the gray. Because that will show me if I have anything weird. I also, once it's all selected, I want to go to make sure I don't have any strokes. So I go to Object, Path, Outline, Strokes. And if it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any. And then I'm all set. Then I can move it back to the white. And I can clean up my corners. It's okay if I don't merge it. I'm not sure why some of the blob brushes merged and some of them didn't. I have it set to merge, but, but that is okay. Now I'm just going to clean up some of the last stuff I did because this is really hard to freehand, just like it would be with a regular brush pen. So I'm going to use a small selection tool and then use the pencil tool. and try to clean up these corners. And remember, there is an inside edge and an outside edge. I pretty much inked this for the inside edge, so it's just the outside edge I have to clean. And if I want to clean this inside edge, sometimes, and if they're not merged, sometimes I have to merge them, force them to merge. Make sure that doesn't fill in something with black. I didn't want it to fill in. And it seems like it did. No, it didn't. Good. Okay. So kind of adding these things together, that allows me to then use the pencil tool and clean it all up. But I have to start on the path and end on the path. Otherwise, it creates a whole new path, and I'm not interested in that. There we go. And from experience, it's a lot easier to clean these outside edges than the inside edges. Oops. If I hold down Command to get to the Small Selection tool, Gives me the inside and then fix these corners. And you can do it in stages. Because often your pencil tool will add anchor points. That makes it a little bit easier to stay on the path. And then if it gets a little too wonky, you can always use the Smooth tool. And you see that will only work on the selected edge. Another mature mistake is to overuse the Smooth tool, and you can always tell in work where Smooth has been overused because every corner will be soft. And so you just use this move tool when you need it. It's not like cosmetic surgery where everything is better if it's smoothed out or soft focus, like a soap opera. Sometimes you need those sharp corners. And now I'm getting a little obsessive, and I need to stop. Let's keep it simple. Remember, 
second graders are going to be coloring all over your beautiful artwork. So it doesn't need to be too perfect. Just it needs to be entertaining enough. For the little Hellions to get their crayons on. I don't know why the inside edges are always so much harder to get right than the outside. It's just harder to, to get the angle on. And I think when I we started this assignment, I said very few students just love Illustrator. But some do. It's great to be able to make things so clean, but it can be incredibly frustrating too. It's the way it operates when you're used to drawing by hand. Because it feels so indirect. But when you need a vector, you need a vector. So there's a few ways to get there, right? With live tracing or with just building it on your own. All right, almost done. Closer. There we go. Lots of practice at failing in digital art. And with Illustrator, I think the more you use it, you get better, you get faster, but most of all, you get confident that whatever issues come up, you will be able to fix them eventually. You know, still things will surprise you. But I panic less now using Illustrator, now that I've used it for a decade. And really, even though I've been doing professional illustration for over 20 years, I've only really used Illustrator heavily in the last decade because I did everything I could to avoid it before that. And no commercial artist now can just avoid it. So I'm glad you guys are jumping in and understanding the value of vectors with this project and all of its challenges. Okay, this is my finished line art. Works for a coloring book. Make sure your sketch is turned off before you save the EPS. Otherwise, that sketch will be part of it and it kind of defeats the whole purpose because that's a raster element. So I'm gonna say file, save as, and this is assignment five, spot illustration line art. I'm no longer working on it in AI, but I'll go ahead and save it as an AI. Update my working file. But the AI file, the Adobe Illustrator file, is not nearly as important as the EPS file. So I save as an EPS. And that is what just like your logo, that is what I'll be able to open up in Photoshop. Now, if I wanted to color within Illustrator, like I'm going to be doing for our mural, it's not difficult to do. It's just the same kind of problems that Illustrator has. So let's say I wanted to color the butterfly in Illustrator. What I would do is create a new blank layer underneath the line art layer. I'll lock my other layers, 
And then I'll just use, let's just do the pencil tool. And I work within the black lines, kind of cutting the glass for the stained glass coloring for this butterfly's wing. I close the path and then I pick a color to make this butterfly's wing kind of a golden yellow. And there it is. And then I can keep layering up colored pieces of paper, right? Behind the black line art. And if I wanted to, I could even replace the black with something else. Now, Illustrator and vectors are best when it's just solid flat color, right? But Illustrator has improved and I can now do things like gradients as well. So you'll find it all under the window tools. I can fill with a gradient and then I can pick colors on the gradient and I can tilt the gradient. It's a little less user friendly than Photoshop is. But in practice, it's the same idea. And then I can apply that kind of fill color to other areas, right? So if I make a new path, the other wing, I have the pencil tool still set on smooth. Usually I would turn it to fully accurate for this. Then I can use the eyedropper tool and just steal that same kind of fill color, whether it has gradients or not. So that's how you color with an illustrator. And sometimes you do that for a color logo if the color is always part of the logo, you know, like a red dot or something. In practical purpose, we want the line art to be the vector, but we can color it using a raster program. So I've already saved it as an EPS and I've saved it as an AI file. This EPS file, this is the one that matters. And what I do is I now open Photoshop and I say file new, just like when we made our logos print ready. So this is setting it up to color. And I'm going to make this 10 inches wide because my illustration is wider than it is tall by 8 inches tall by standard lab resolution, which is 350, 50 pixels per inch higher than professional printing. Create, it's gonna fill it in with white. Notice I didn't right click and say open with Photoshop because that would force me to rasterize it. Then just like we did with your EPS logos, I drag the EPS onto the eight by 10, 350 pixels per inch and and then, just like I did with the logo, I'm going to make it look good. I can hold down Option so it centers within that space. And then hit Return. And this is now a smart object, which won't let me edit it. It will let me distort it. It will let me rotate it. But I do not ever want to rasterize it, because I want it to be clean at any size. So right now, it's as clean as it can be at 350 pixels per inch at 8 by 10. If I wanted to, I can just go to image size, and maybe I'll do this. I'll actually recommend this. Instead of 8 by 10 for this, because we'll be using this spot illustration colored for our poster in the next assignment, I'm going to make it 14 inches wide by 11.2. I'm going to resample. I'll just do 11 and make that by 350. So it just really increased in size. It went from 28 megabytes to 53 megabytes. Yeah, I'll keep it at 14. So it's larger than 11 by 14, which is the next art size standard after 8 by 10. So now it's that. And what's great is because it was still a smart object, it's still now even cleaner because it took the vector and it re it reestablishes that vector at the newer, higher resolution. So that's why we want to keep our vector as a black line art. Okay, the other thing to keep in mind is that when you output an EPS, that's made for professional printing. So it actually